To follow along with the written version of this pattern, which includes instructions on how to make all three sizes of this balloon, follow the link at the bottom of the screen in the description below or by going to clubcrochet.com slash balloon. Hi there, this is Philip, also known as Sir Pearl Gray on Instagram and YouTube. In this tutorial, I'll be guiding you through the pattern for this crochet balloon, which is a part of a collaboration between myself and Louise Loops of Club Crochet. The balloon can be attached to this crochet present box that Louis designed, inspired by the floating balloon presents from the Animal Crossing games. The pattern has three sizes of balloons that you can make to go along with the different box sizes in Louis' pattern. You'll be able to attach the balloon using two methods, either using a string or using a wire. I will be showing you how to do both. Louis and I have worked on a few Animal Crossing patterns together, with more coming soon. Make sure to check them all out at clubcrochet.com slash Animal Crossing. Now, onto the pattern. For this tutorial, we're going to be making the medium-sized balloon, which is proportional to the small size present box from Louis's pattern. For materials, you're going to need any color of worsted weight cotton yarn. We're using cotton yarn just because it's sturdy and it tends to hold its shape really well. For your crochet hook, I'm going to be using a G size or a 4mm hook. You're going to need some scissors, and you're going to need a darning needle. So I like to use a darning needle with a little bent tip, just makes sewing a little bit easier. To attach your balloon to your present box, you can use thin wire, or you can use thin embroidery thread. And to stuff your balloon, we're going to need some polyfill. So we've got all our materials, let's get started. To begin crocheting our medium balloon, we're going to start with a magic loop. Hold the end of your yarn between your thumb and your ring finger. With the other end of the yarn, you're going to wrap these two fingers, crossing over, making an X. When you turn your hand over, you should have two loops on these two fingers. Hold the working yarn in between your ring finger and your pinky finger to hold it tight. Take your crochet hook, insert your hook underneath the first loop, and then over the second loop. Draw that second loop underneath the first, and then twist your hook down and towards yourself to create a little twist in your yarn. And now you're going to yarn over with your working yarn, so the yarn that's being held by your pinky and your ring finger and then you're going to draw that yarn through the loop that's on your hook. Pull up tight to create a knot. You should now be able to safely take the ring off of your fingers, and we're going to close up our ring to about the size of a dime, just to make it a little easier to work into. For round number one, we're going to be creating six single crochets into that magic ring. So for your first single crochet, you're going to insert your hook into the ring, yarn over, and then draw that yarn through the ring, and then you're going to yarn over one more time, and then draw that yarn through both of the loops that's on your hook. This creates one single crochet. For the second one, insert your hook into the ring, yarn over, draw that yarn through the ring, and then yarn over one more time, drawing that yarn through both of the loops on your hook. There's our second single crochet. There's our third. There's four. Five and six. Now to close up your ring, pinch the last stitch that you worked and then pull on the tail. You should now be able to close up the ring and we should now be able to work around in a circle. The first stitch that you're going to be working into is the first little V shape that you see to the left of your hook. Now when we work into these stitches, you're always going to be inserting your hook underneath both loops of the stitch. For round number two, we're going to be working an increase into each one of these stitches. An increase is just two single crochets into a single stitch. So for the first one, you're going to insert your hook into the stitch underneath both loops, yarn over, draw the yarn through the stitch, and then yarn over and finish off the single crochet by pulling through both loops. Now to make our increase, you're going to insert your hook into the same spot, yarn over, draw the yarn through the stitch, and then yarn over, and then draw the yarn through both loops. So now we've created one increase. For the next one, we'll move to the next V, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, and draw through, and then yarn over, pull through both loops. Now to make the increase, insert your hook into the same spot, and then create a single crochet. So we need to do four more increases. There's our third increase. There's four increases.
There's our fifth. And then our sixth. So we should now have 12 stitches in total. So if you were to count the little Vs around the edge, you should have 12 stitches in total. So starting from the bottom of my hook, you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So now we can move on to round number three. Now, before I start round number three, I'm going to take a contrasting piece of yarn and place it underneath my current stitch. This is going to act as a bookmark because once we make our way all the way around to that little marker, then we'll know that we've completed that round. So for round number three, we're going to be single crocheting into the first stitch and then making an increase into the second stitch. Into the third stitch, we'll just single crochet. And then into the next stitch, we're going to make an increase. So we're just going to keep alternating between a single crochet and then an increase. Single crochet, and then increase. Single crochet, and then increase. Single crochet, and increase. And then single crochet, and then our final increase should bring us up to 18 stitches. I'm gonna move my marker so just taking it out and then resetting it right underneath my current stitch. For round number four, we're going to single crochet two and then increase in every third stitch. So for first stitch, we're just going to single crochet. And then second stitch, just a single crochet. And then for a third stitch, we're going to increase. So we're going to put two single crochets into the same stitch. Next, single crochet single crochet, and then increase. Then we're going to go single, single, increase. Single, single, increase. Single, single, increase. For the last repeat, single, single, and our last increase should bring us up to a total of 24 stitches. I'm going to reset my yarn. For rounds five to nine, we're just going to be making a single crochet into each stitch around. So for round five, we're just going to single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, and then just continue on until we get to round number nine. So I will meet you back here after round nine. So I'm just coming up on the last few stitches of round number nine. There's my last single crochet for round nine. So. Now I'm going to reset my marker. So we have a nice round shape for our balloon, but now we're going to start to decrease. So for round number 10, we're going to single crochet two, and then we're going to make an invisible decrease over the next two stitches. So we're going to single crochet two, and then we're going to make an invisible decrease over the third and the fourth stitch. So for an invisible decrease, what you're going to do is insert your hook into the front loop of the next stitch and then insert your hook into the front loop of the following stitch. From there, you're going to yarn over and then draw the yarn through those two first loops. And then you're going to yarn over one more time and then draw that yarn through the remaining two loops. So next, we're going to do two single crochets. 
and then make an invisible decrease. So again, just insert your hook into the front loops of the following two stitches, yarn over, and then draw the yarn through the first two loops, yarn over one more time, and then draw that yarn through the next two loops. Single crochet two, and then invisible decrease. Single crochet two, invisible decrease. Single crochet two, and decrease. Single crochet two, and then our last decrease should now bring us to a total of 18 stitches. Let's reset my marker. For round 11, you're gonna be single crocheting seven and then making an invisible decrease. So for the first seven stitches, we're just gonna do seven regular single crochets. Four, five, six, seven. And then we're gonna make an invisible decrease. So insert your hook into the front loops of the following two stitches, yarn over, draw through the first two loops, yarn over, and then draw through the remaining two loops. Okay, and then we're gonna single crochet seven and then decrease. And seven, and then decrease. So this should bring us down to a total of 16 stitches. For round number 12, I'm going to reset my marker. We're now going to single crochet two and then make an invisible decrease. So single crochet one, single crochet two, and invisible decrease. Single crochet one, two, and invisible decrease. Single crochet one, two, and then decrease. And last repeat, single crochet one, single crochet two, and then decrease. We should now be at a total of 12 stitches at the end of this round. Before we do round 13, I'm going to remove my marker, and then I'm going to stuff the balloon before the opening gets too small. So we're going to take some polyfill, and then just fill up the balloon until it's nice and plump. Okay, that feels pretty good. And then for round 13, we're going to be making six invisible decreases, and that that should decrease the amount of stitches to six. So I'll make a decrease. There's one. There's our second invisible decrease. There's three. Four. five, and six. In round 14, we're going to be making the little lip of the balloon. So we're going to now increase to 10 stitches in total. So to do that, what we're going to be doing is making two increases, and then a single crochet, and then two increases, and then a single crochet. So first we're going to start with an increase. Increase, single crochet, and then increase, increase, 
and single crochet. So that creates a little lip just to make it look like uh, what a balloon looks like when you tie the end. So now we're going to finish this off. We're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch. So you're going to yarn over and then just draw the yarn through the stitch and then through the loop on your hook. Now we're going to cut a short tail. We don't need very much. And then next we're going to use our darning needle to hide this end. So we'll thread the needle. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go behind the next stitch and then pull it tight. And then I'm going to reinsert the needle right into the middle of our slip stitch. Okay, and then pull tight. Okay, and then I'm going to try my best to get into this little opening here. And we're just going to hide our yarn just underneath some loops on the inside of the balloon. Okay, a couple more on the inside. And then for this tail, we don't even need to trim it. We can just hide it inside the balloon for some extra stuffing. So there is our balloon. In the next step, I'm going to show you how to attach the wire or the string to your balloon. To attach the balloon to the present box, you can use a loose string or you can use a wire. The loose string will be the easier method and it will allow the box to dangle from the bottom of the balloon, but it won't keep the balloon upright like it does with the wire method. One thing I did with my small balloon was I took apart an old keychain ring and I attached it to the top of the balloon. Then you can hang this from your keys or your backpack. Attaching the balloon with a wire allows you to display your present box with the illusion that it's floating and the wire can be easily removed as it's just inserted through the center of the top of the box. To add the loose string to my balloon, I'm going to be using thin embroidery thread, but if you don't have embroidery thread, you can just use any thin white yarn. We're going to start by making a slip knot. To make my slip knot, I start it very similarly to my magic loop. I'm going to hold the end of the yarn with my thumb and my ring finger, and then these two fingers I'm going to wrap with the other end of the yarn, making sure I cross over making an X, turn my hand over, and I should have two loops on these two fingers. I'm going to take my crochet hook, I'm going to go underneath the first loop, hook onto the second loop, and then I'm just going to pull that second loop all the way through. And then I'm going to pull everything off my fingers as well, and then pull up to create a little knot. And then you should have an adjustable slip knot. Now I'm going to cut myself a generous amount of embroidery thread. And then I'm going to take my balloon, and then in between rounds 10 and 11, where that little lip is, I'm going to put my slip knot right over it, and then I'm going to pull on the tails just to tighten it as much as possible. Now, for this shorter tail end, we can just trim it, or you can hide it in, but I'm just going to trim it. And then with the longer tail, I'm going to thread my needle And then I'm just going to insert it through the little lip of the balloon and then have it coming out from the opening of the balloon. Now to attach it to my princess box, I'm just going to take the lid of the box and then I'm going to insert the needle through the center of the top of the box. And then just pull it enough so that the balloon is about three or four inches above the lid of the box. Now, to make sure that it's secure on the inside of the box, I'm just going to loop my thread through a few of the loops on the top of the box. So I like to do about two or three little loops just to make sure that it's secure. OK, 
Okay, once you feel that it's secure, you can trim off that tail. And now your balloon should be floating above the top of the lid of the box. Adding a wire string is a more useful way if you want to keep your balloon perfectly upright, but it does require some wire to do. Now, if you don't have any wire, you can also use a white pipe cleaner. Now, you're also going to need strong scissors in order to cut your wire. You don't want to use your nice yarn scissors. We're going to cut about 10 inches of wire. Now, you're going to insert the tip of the wire through the center of the balloon, and then just have it come out the neck of the balloon. Okay, and then what you're going to do is just tightly wrap that wire around the lip of that balloon. Now, with the other end of the wire, what I like to do is fold it up in half and then insert that tip back into the center of the balloon. And then I'm just gonna twist the wire around itself just to make it a little bit stronger. So it just reinforces the wire so that it's better at standing upright in your gift box. Okay, now we just straighten it out. Once your wire is nice and straightened out, you can attach it to your present box just by inserting the end of the wire into the top of the present box, right through the center of the top. And if you want to make your wire look like it's made out of yarn, try wrapping it with some white yarn. and making sure that you just wrap it tightly all the way down so that no wire is showing. And then you can just secure the white yarn using a hot glue gun. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Remember to check out Louis' channel Club Crochet to see how to make these awesome present boxes. And remember to check out our other Animal Crossing collaboration patterns at clubcrochet.com slash animalcrossing. Till next time, catch you later.